Hi folks, welcome to the channel. If you're a new or returning subscriber, please remember to like our videos, provide comments to help us with continuous improvement to our content, share with friends and family, and most importantly, subscribe. Thank you. So when it comes to um, structures, there's something that we term a beam. And the way that structures are named is subject to the relationship of the structure and the deforming load. So if you have a structure where you've got a force normal to the component or transverse to the component, that will instigate bending as a mode of deformation. So that's essentially what a beam is. So a beam is simply a structure that can withstand or withhold transient loads. So that's essentially it. So based on the interaction of the position of the deforming load, that will be 90 degrees to the neutral plane of the given structure. And how the ends are constrained will depict how much bending the beam will more or less experience. So that's essentially what a beam is all about. So it's fairly straightforward. So just a very quick recap. Struts are structures that are deforming under what? Tensile loading, tensile axial loading. Stru uh, ties are components that are being subjected to what? Tension. Oh, so I think I got that way, uh, the other way around. So struts, compressive loading. Ties, tensile loading. And beams, transverse loading. So hopefully that is clear. So moving on, so what is the significance of understanding bending in design? So as I stated, bending is the mode of deformation due to how a transverse load is interacting with a component. So it's important that we have some understanding of bending to ascertain what the loading uh, parameters are to ensure that uh, a structure that is acting as a beam is deforming within its uh, material limits, thus the elastic region. So you don't want any um, means of plastic set to um, set in play to cause a permanent deformation to a given structure. There's also a material selection component to it, depending on how much flexural strength you are desiring for a given uh, structure. There's also that element of measuring how far or how much a component will deflect due to how it's been loaded. So that measure of deflection will depict how much the structure is sagging. So when we talk about sagging, this is what sagging means. So if the beam is bending inwards, so that's essentially sagging. So uh, what do you just tend to do? They tend to characterize that by, if you see the beam smile or the structure smiling, then that's characterizing sagging. And when you have hogging, that's the other way around. So that's like the beam, um, being sad. So if you have a beam bending outwards, then that's essentially what hogging is. Okay. So when it comes to um, conditions of loading due to a transverse load, these are the two states that will be um, the stretch of work experience. There's also that issue of sharing. So if the ply load generates excessive um, moments to cause the structure to bend, it will reach the point whereby the structure will start to shear. So having an understanding of the concept of bending enables you to identify where, um, based on how a structure is constrained and the application of uh, the transfer load on a given structure, at what point are you likely to have the structure bend excessively and eventually fail? So this is one of the significance that we need to consider. Um, there's another bit regarding the geometry parameters. So when it comes to increasing the resilience of any component against loading, there are two means of going about achieving that. The first part is kind of like less academic, so that will be the characteristics or the properties of the material that will be required in fabricating the part. The second part is based on the geometric parameters, particularly the sectional profile 
of the structure being subjected to bending. So these are the means that design, as a design, you can go about uh, iterating and improving the performance of the given structure against bending. And the last part I need to point out is this. Unlike struts and ties, where you only have one state of stress, so for a component that's deemed a tie, they'll be subjected to tensile stress, a strut, compressive stress. When it comes to bending, the component will be in two states of stress. One segment will be under compression and one segment will be under tension. So when you're analyzing structures in terms of uh, structures that need to be subjected or need to endure some form of bending load, then these are the two things that you need to try to predict to ensure that the measure of stress is within acceptable limits. So hopefully that is clear. So in this diagram, it's just basically giving you some indication in terms of the state of bending and how the geometric parameters can increase the resilience from a geometric perspective. So we'll look at that in a few slides later. So this is some clear examples of how you can apply the concept of bending and performance simple analysis. So here you've got uh, a lady standing on um, a table. So you can use the concept of bending to model the tabletop to depict if we have to constrain the length and the width of the table, how can we hit that sweet spot in terms of the thickness of the table to ensure that number one, it doesn't break, and number two, it doesn't overly sag. So this is a representation of what's going on here. So the weight of the lady is represented by W. And as you can see, the weight of the lady is 90 degrees to what's called the neutral axis. So the neutral axis is very important to explore because at the neutral axis, the structure will not experience any measure of stress. Thus, stress at the neutral axis is equal to zero. So it's very important. The table lengths are acting as the points of reaction or points of constraint. And depending on the distance of the deforming load to the support, that would depict how far or how much the table will deflect. So this symbol delta represents deflection. So this is how far um, the surface or the neutral axis has been displaced due to the applied load and constraint conditions. Okay. Another situation in terms of how you can go about applying the concept of bending is if you were to assume as we're doing a design review on this um, panel here. So this is for a cooler. So here you've got um, the door that can be simulated as a cantilever beam, where you've got one end that is free and you've got one end that's fully constrained or fixed. So we have an assumed apply load here that's going to cause the structure to deflect to a certain limit. And we can use this to predict what the reaction is and then also predict what the shear force is. So the shear force is what's going to primarily instigate some measure of tearing along the hinge. So by using the console bend there, you can then predict what will be the ideal size of the hinge um, pin to ensure that over time, that part doesn't shear. So these are some of the basic things you can actually um, use bending for. Thank you.